What is going on guys? Welcome to the Python tutorial series for beginners. In today's video we're going to talk about strings, string functions and dealing with strings. Now notice that this episode, the episode number 10, is the last episode of the Python tutorial series for beginners. From the next episode on we're going to talk about intermediate concepts like object-oriented programming, network programming, multi-threading and so on. And uh, we're no longer talking, talking about beginner stuff. So this is the last video, the last episode, where we're going to talk about some basic Python stuff, some fundamentals. And because dealing with strings is very important and fundamental and we'll oftentimes need this in programming. So let us get into the code. Now the first thing that we need to know about strings is that we can treat them as sequences of characters. Now we already talked about this in the data types video because we mentioned that strings are just sequences of characters, but we can also treat them like that. So since a string is a list, we can also uh, use certain list functions, we can slice a string, and so on. So when I have the string hello world, what I can do is I can just print the length of the string. Because it is basically just a list. In this case it has the length of 12 because it has 12 uh, characters in it. It has 5 here one space, uh, another five here, and one exclamation mark. So you can imagine a string to be a list of characters. It would look somehow like this, just an H followed by an E, followed by an L, followed by another L, and so on. So this is basically how we can think of a string in Python. Now, since it's a list, we can also slice it, and um, we can also index it, because when I say print text uh, 2, for example, it will give me the third letter, which is an L, because I access the index 2. And the index 2 would be the third position, which is an L, and this is why it gets print. And I can use slicing, which we learned about uh, in the sequences video, to say uh, I want to print out the whole string, but starting at index, uh, let me see, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let's say from 6, which would just print world. So I can slice uh, strings that way. Also, what I can do is I can just iterate over strings. So I can say for letter in text print letter. And the control variable will be all the letters, of course, or will be another letter in every iteration. Now, the first thing that we need to talk about when it comes to strings is that we can treat strings as a sequence of characters. We already talked about this in the data types video, but it is actually a fact that we can use strings and apply certain uh, functions and certain techniques that we can apply on strings. For example, what we can do is, let's say we have a text, hello world. What I can do is I can just print uh, the length of this text. In this case, this would be 12 because I have 12 characters in hello world. As you can see, 12. And I can use this because a string, you can imagine a string to be like uh, a list that has an H followed by an E, followed by an L, followed by another L, and so on. And this would be basically a string, a sequence of characters, a string of characters. And uh, just applying the length function is not everything I can do. I can also, uh, for example, slice a string. I can say print text, and since it's a list, I can use indices. And I can say print the whole string starting at uh, 6, at index 6, which would be position 7, and this would be the W here, so it would just print world. So the first thing is that we can treat strings as lists, and what I can also do is, of course, I can just say for letter in text print uh, letter. So I can process the individual characters in a string by iterating over them, as you can see. Now, the second thing that we need to know about strings is how to deal with so-called escape characters, because there are certain characters that we cannot just write into the string. For example, if I have a text and I want to say, hello world, and then I want to make a new line and say, 
uh, this day is awesome. If I want to do this, I cannot just go ahead and do it like that. This would not work. But what I can do is I can use the escape character for a new line. And an escape character for a new line is backslash n. So when I say backslash n and when I print the text here, what happens is that it makes a line break. So whenever I want to make a line break in a string, I have to use a backslash n. Of course, I can also just use uh, triple quotations and uh, make line breaks that way. But if I want to use an ordinary string, I have to use the backslash n escape character. Now, it's not the only escape character. I can also use backslash t, for example, uh, for a tap. I can use backslash b for a backspace, uh, backslash s for space, and so on. But the only one I really use, and a lot of other people uh, only use, is the new line. So backslash n is really important. The other ones are optional. If you want to know all of them, just, just Google them. But what you will need very often is the backslash n escape character for a new line. Another very awesome thing to do with strings is the so-called string formatting. Because sometimes we want to print something. Let's say we have a, uh, I don't know, a name, uh, which is user input, for example. And we have an h that is user input. And then we want to print a text that somehow gives us the information about this. So I can say my name is whatever and I am however many years old. Now what I can do of course is I can just uh, say my name is and then plus name plus and I am and then here I could just say plus h and print it that way but that's kind of complicated and not really beautiful so let's say my name is i don't know mike and i am 34 years old so it would work that way also but what i could also do and what is the better choice is to use string formatting and there are two types of string formatting the first one is to just say uh my name is, and then specify with a percent sign the data type that you're going to enter here. So in this case, uh, we could say I'm going, uh, I'm expecting a string, for example. So percent s, my name is, and I am, and here I'm in this case also ex expecting a string because the input is a string. But let's say I'm typecasting the input here into a number, so I would have to use percent d because it's a different data type. Again, if you need to know the uh, individual percent, uh, individual letters that you need to use for the data types, check out the link in the description because there I'll provide you some links for the Python documentation where you can check out all the different data types and letters here. Uh, but D is just for numbers, S is for strings. And what I can do here is I can then use another percent sign and here I can specify name and age. So this would also work. Again, let's say Mike, and this time he's 12. Uh, actually, I have to pass a tuple, sorry. Mike, 12. As you can see, it works. So if I was to change this to a string, it would not work. Because let's say Mike, again, 12 years old. Okay, actually it works. Oh yeah, because it basically typecasts the uh, integer automatically into a string, so it's my fault. Now, if you want a more generalized way for formatting, what you can also do is you can just say print my name is, and then just a placeholder without specifying a data type by using two curly brackets. And then you can say, and I am another placeholder Oh man, I am, and then years old, and then you can use the dot format method. So you use the string, and then you call the dot format method of this string, and then you pass all the uh, parameters, so name and age. 
and you'll see mic 24 this time we get the same result here so now we get to the most exciting part of this video which is the string functions now there are a lot of string functions out there and if you want to know all of them check out the link in the description where i'm going to provide um, you the link to the documentation where you can find all the different string functions how they work what they're used for and so on but in this video we're only going to cover the essential and most useful ones um, which in this case I just picked six different string methods that we're going or string functions that we're going to talk about so let's start out with the first one the case manipulation functions now this is a whole category of functions but I summarize it into one uh, because everything that manipulates the case could be called a case manipulation function. Imagine you have a text. Uh, this is my text. And I have one letter here with uppercase and all the other letters are lowercase. Now, if I want to change that, for example, in all the letters being uppercase, what I can do is I can just say text equals text dot upper. And then I can print the text. And the upper method transforms the whole text into uppercase. I can do the same thing with lower for lowercase and you'll see that even the capital T in the beginning is now lowercase. So these are just the two basic upper lower case manipulation functions but what I can also do for example is I can use the title case. So I can say text.title and what this does is it capitalizes every word. So it says capital T, capital I, capital M, capital T again. So it, in the beginning of every word, the first letter uh, gets transformed into uppercase. And another method that sometimes might be quite useful is the swap case. Uh, and as the name already tells us, what it does is it just swaps the case. So when we have a, an uppercase, we transform it into a lowercase and the other way around. So these are the case manipulation functions. Now let's get into the second function, which is the count function. Now the count function is quite simple. It just counts how many times a substring is contained in a string. For example, when we have uh, I am Mike and my life is beautiful, beautiful because of my job. I don't know. Just wanted to use the same word twice. For example, we have my two times. And what I can now do is I can just print uh, text.count and then I enter a substring my and it will give me how many times my occurs in this time, uh, in this case two times. And of course I can do this with every other word. For example, Mike or I can just pass a space here to see how many spaces we have, white spaces we have, 11 in this case, or we can also count letters, for example, how many A's, lowercase uh, A's we have, and or how many I's I have, and if I wanna combine the two functions, so if I just check for lowercase I's, I get four, but maybe I also wanna check for uppercase I's, so tax.count. Uh, I, or I can just use upper, but in this case would be useless. I would get five because I have one capital I. So it basically just counts how many time the parameter is in the main string. So now let us get to the next function, which is the find function. The find function, what it does is it returns the string, uh, it, no, sorry, it returns the index of the string. So if I want to know what index, what position in the string a substring is at, I can just use the find function. Uh, I'm always writing new strings, it's kind of, I could just keep one, but let's say again, I am Mike and I feel great. For example, what I can do is I can just print uh, text.find and I want to know where Mike is at. And in this case, I would get five which means that this is zero, one, two, three, four, five. So index five, position six. As we know, we start counting from zero. So 
this is where the M starts, where the whole string starts. Now, if I enter I, a word that is contained two times, what happens is I get zero because I always get the first occurrence. In this case, it's just the zeroth element, the, the index zero, the, the first position, and uh, it will not care about the second one. Now, another very useful function that we can use is the join function. The join function is basically used to uh, join a sequence to one string separated by a specific uh, separator. So let's say we define a separator. Uh, for example, we can use a comma or just a minus or we can, yeah, let's, let's just use a comma or a semicolon. And what I can do is I can take a list here, my list, let's say a list of words, uh, for example, I don't know, kitchen, dog, and Mike, again, our friend. And what we can do now is we can say separator dot join my list. And of course, we would have to print this or save this in some way. Because what this does is it just combines all the elements separated by our separator. So this is no longer a list. This is a string. And all the list elements are uh, joined together by the separators. Of course, I can also use this for sentences. For example, I am Mike. And I can just use a white space here to make a list into a sentence. In this case, I am Mike. Now, the opposite function of that would be the split function. I can not only combine lists uh, or join lists into strings, I can also do it the other way around. Maybe I have a string full of separators and I want to separate this string into uh, a list or a sequence. So maybe I have, I don't know, uh, I am happy because my name is Mike and these texts are getting more and more ridiculous over time. But what I can add do is maybe I want to save all the words into a sequence. And what I can do is I can say words equals text dot uh, split. And then I have to specify a separator, in this case, a white space. And then I could print the words list and I would get all the words in a sequence. And of course, I can do this with every other uh, separator as well. I can also use some stupid uh, separators like A which would always separate strings where I have an A. As you can see, it does not make sense, but it also works if you want to do this. And you can always uh, choose your own separator. Now, the last function that we're going to learn about is the replace function. And it's quite simple. We just have to, uh, I don't know, say I am Mike. My name is Mike, and maybe I just want to replace Mike with something else. So I can say text.replace uh, replace Mike with, I don't know, Sarah or something. And of course, uh, this does not make sense because I'm not printing anything. I, of course, have to print the result. And the result would be I am Sarah, my name is Sarah. So to replace strings, by another string. So basically what we're doing is we're replacing a substring by another substring in this whole uh, string here. And we do this by using the replace function. So that's what we need to know about strings. Congratulations for finishing the Python tutorial series for beginners. As I said, the next uh, Python tutorial series will be for intermediates. Every video from now on will be not for beginners, except for maybe some tips and tricks for beginners, but the playlist beginners uh, or the playlist for Python beginners is now completed. You've done it and stay tuned. Keep watching the next series because we're now getting into some really interesting stuff with object oriented programming, network programming and so on. So stay tuned. Keep watching. Hit the like button if you like the video. Subscribe to this channel if you want to see more. Feel free to ask uh, questions and give feedback in the comment section down below. And thank you very much for watching. See you in the next episode and bye.